you know, it's tax time again, and we've been doing, I think it's my third tax video lately. But this one is a little different. This is 10 crazy deductions that people have actually gotten away with. Number one, plastic surgery. Cosmetic surgery costs are usually non-deductible, but an exotic dancer named Chesty Love tested this rule. If you want bigger tips, you go bigger, she reasoned. So she decided to go way bigger, shelling out for implants that would increase her size to 56 double F. When she wrote off the bill, the IRS said it was non-deductible cosmetic surgery. But in Hess first commissioner, the tax court allowed tax benefits allowing her to claim the implants as the depreciable assets. A type of stage prop. That's amazing. Number two, paying your lover. In Bruce versus Commissioner, Bruce hired. Oops, sorry, had an ad pop up there for a minute. Bruce hired his living girlfriend to find furniture, overseas repa overseas repairs, and rental properties, and to run his personal household. The IRS said deducting her pay was not legit, but Bruce went to tax court and won. The court said twenty-five to nine thousand of the nine thousand he paid her was the business expense. Now, see, that can be legit as long as you actually provide a ten ninety-nine. Number three, deducting pet food. Now, we all have pets, right? Like, well, the majority of us. So we'll say 90% of people we know have pets. A California cat lady got national press for a decision allowing vet bills and cat food as charitable con contributions. But after she beat the IRS, she faced animal cruelty charges on top of that. So while she won, she lost. Even with that ending, hers isn't the only successful cat deduction. In Seawright vs. Commissioner, a couple ran a junkyard. They put out food to attract wild cats to control snakes and rats, making the junkyard safer for customers. They claimed the cat food is a business expense, the IRS in the way, and tax court saved the day. Remember, folks, you don't have to be afraid of the IRS. There is a way to appeal and go to court over it. That's usually how you win. You have to actually go and plead your case. Drunk driving expenses. After Mr. Roars drank too much at a party, he waited for hours until he was okay to get his car. Responsible. Still, he drove off the road and was arrested. His car was damaged and the insurance company refused to cover it. So Mr. Wars paid for repairs and deducted them. It was a casualty loss, he claimed. The IRS said no, but yet again, tax court allowed. Makes you want to wonder how you can get away with some of this stuff. Number five, babysitting fees. Now, actually, believe it or not, this is actually a legit tax deduction. It's child care if you go on like H&R Block or TurboTax or whatever you use, there's an actual child care tax rebate you can get. So there's actually a legit one. This person just messed with the system. Babysitters are personal expenses plus IRS publications says you can't deduct child care as charitable contributions. That's what he did. Mrs. Kingsley had a sitter so she could do volunteer work and deducted the sitter fees anyway. The IRS said no, but she wanted tax court. Again, tax court to the rescue. Here's one we all like. Beer. Remember trading stamps? It's a promotional screen, a scheme that wouldn't fly today. A gas station offered free beer instead of trading stamps. The owner deducted the beer as a business expense and the IRS said no. But guess what? He went to tax court and he won anyway. Man, tax court seems to lose a lot. Home landscaping. Now, most of us can't afford home landscaping that I know of. I live in an apartment, so we don't have home landscaping. But home office deductions are notoriously scrutinized, so it might surprise you that someone deducted home landscaping in one. A man regularly met clients at his home office and kept the place to make it suitable. It wasn't all deductible. The tax court allowed part of the landscaping costs, even money for lawn care and dry repairs. Now, that makes sense. If you're running a business out of your home, Upkeep is part of business expenses, whether it be your house or it be your an actual building. So I could see how he won that. Pet moving expenses for number eight. If you are changing jobs and met several meet several tests, IRS says you can deduct moving expenses. The IRS says you can even deduct moving expenses for your pet, and they are not even subject to an alternative minimum tax. So that's an IRS posting. Body oil. This won't work for most people, but Corey 
Weir was a professional bodybuilder who went through a lot of body oil so his muscles would glisten during the competition. Ah, I could see that as a business expense. You're literally advertising your body. When he ducked the oil on his taxes, the IRS no. <laughs> and again, tax court let it go. <laughs> Just remember, folks, if you ever go to tax court, you apparently you stand a very good chance of winning if you proper have a proper argument. Swimming pools. Legitimate medical expenses can include wide-ranging tax breaks. Swimming pools are an actual medical necessity depending on the person. I've actually seen pool therapy listed as a tax deduction before when I tried doing taxes a few years ago for people. In a matter, it can matter. In Cherry vs. Commission, a taxpayer, taxpayer had emphysema and installed a swimming pool after his doctor ordered an exercise regimen. Swimming is a very good form of exercise. It combines restricted movement, which you get with resistance bands. It provides strengthening, endurance, and a whole bunch of other features. It also allows you to relax your muscles so you're not straining them as hard constantly. The primary purpose of the pool is medical care, so you got a fat deduction. Even covered part of the cost of heating the pool, pool chemicals, and a proportionate part of ensuring the pool area. But, some deductions can be surprising. Air travel. Then drive for hours being limited to one daily commercial flight, the Frenches brought their own plane and checked it into on to check on their rental condo. The IRS said no way, but the tax court allowed write-offs, even though the condo was a big loss. Happy tax time, everybody. Remember, this is Carpe Noctum. Y'all stay safe. I hope to see a whole lot more subscribers the next time I come on the channel. See if we can't give away that gift card this month. If not, well, maybe we'll think of something for March. Y'all stay safe. Much love.